Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Season 7? Episodes 12 and 13. Discordant Harmony and the Perfect Pair. We're mainly doing this because from all the information we could find, these two episodes were shown at the same time in the U.S. on the 5th of August. So we're going with what we found, and if we're wrong, at least the perfect pair should have been showing. But we can't tell because the official app didn't have it, so. Makes it kind of hard to judge, and also the numbering says that Discordant Harmony should have been first. Though I think it would have been more appropriate for that to be episode 13. Yeah, with Discord. Mm-hmm. So anyways, we're going to try to keep it pretty separated, and we'll put a timestamp if you want to just skip from one episode to the other. Yep, you'll be able to click on it, and we'll take you right to that section. Thank you, YouTube, and being able to link to partial timelines. Now, into the first episode in number order, Discordant Harmony. Yes, more fun with Discord. A very well done Discord episode, because it was Discord being Discord within the constraints of someone who's all-powerful but doesn't always use all his powers. So it allowed us to have all the fun without going, wow, he's so overpowered. Also, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen to the Ponyville economy with all that money suddenly coming in that may have or may not have been instantly created in that in that instance, because it could cause some inflation. Just a little bit, but we still don't know overall value of bits and gems, because Rarity pays everyone in gems, which she just goes out and digs herself. The bits... Were they issued from Canterlot? You know, is it regulated? Do they have a maker stamp? Are all the ones from Discord, they have his face on him? Or is it okay as long as they're metal? Is it the whatever metal the bits are made out of? Or are Discords made out of a valuable metal that might be different from regular bits? Yeah. Just, it's like one of those things that popped into my head as I was watching the episode. It's like, What's going to happen to Ponyville's economy with all that money suddenly coming in that may or may not be fake? Also, if it's not fake, where the heck is Discord getting it from? And are the royal coffers suddenly a whole lot more empty? Because that's probably the one place Discord would pull money from, if you think about it. He's a very long-lived Draconiquist. He might actually have a hoard. Yeah, but I'm just saying if he did pull the money from anywhere that isn't his... He'd do it from Celestia. Oh, yeah. They have that kind of relationship. Mm-hmm. And the royal treasurers come up to Celestia and go, We are suddenly short several... <sighs> Discord. <laughs> Sends a letter to Twilight. Twilight's like, What? <laughs> goes to Fluttershy. What? <laughs> Discord, I'm very disappointed in you. Oh, I didn't think she'd miss a little bit of money. She has so much. <laughs> But Discord, that's not the point. It wasn't yours. <laughs> oh, we're doing that too well. And the reason I said that too well is because I'm the Fluttershy and she's the Discord. I am not an agent of pure chaos. Ah, that was a fun little play there. Can't believe we did so well right off the top of our heads. Ah, <laughs> uh, poor Discord. He wanted to host and so excited he's like wait a minute you put all this effort into this and i just show up yeah that, that's kind of how hosting a party works the host puts in effort and you show up and then you tell them how much you enjoyed it and that's what they get out of it that's their reward or a thank you gift or a host gift or if it's a potluck you all bring something but that's kind of how it works i love how he was like, oh, you remember to cut off the cross how I like. And then he takes the sandwich that has the cross, but only takes the center. Uh, you mean he only took the crust? No, he took the center. No, he took the crust. His fingers ate the crustless part. No, that was the crustless sandwich. There was another tray of sandwiches that had crusts. No, there was another tray of that was just the crusts. All it was was just the crusts. Okay, I saw the crust. I thought he took it out of the center. No, he just... The way he did it is, uh, he went, oh, you remember to remove the crust for me, thank you, and he picked up the crust and ate it. Okay, so visually I got that wrong. Well, it goes by really quickly, because there's a ton of jokes that go on in that sequence. Yeah, like the finger food. Mm-hmm. What do you say? 
Excuse me. I can't take them anywhere. Yeah, the fingers are eating the finger food. It's food for the fingers. And I do like how he finally realized, like, oh, well, I, I want to make her feel comfortable at my party. But he also didn't realize that she was already expecting his chaos because she's been around him so much. And she's also grown so much, particularly showing it in this season. Very much so. Because Pinkie Pie did give Discord pretty good advice of just make her feel comfortable. It doesn't have to be this big ordeal. She's your friend. You know her. Just make her feel comfortable. And Pinkie Pie didn't specifically say to be normal. She just said, make her feel comfortable. Yeah, so that means all you had to do was be welcoming and make sure there wasn't anything that was going to hurt her. Or scare her. But since she knows you, your house is actually pretty mild for how chaotic you could have been. Yes, and it's not like you don't bring lots of chaos to her tea parties. You were in the sugar bowl, your fingers ate the sandwiches, you turned on a faucet in midair and flooded her home. You used a sheep to dry off your claws. Yeah, and I love the sound the sheep made. Sounds a lot like those hand dryers. Mm hmm And the whole scene of, um, Discord, before you leave, could you help me clean up? He goes, oh, yeah, sorry. Click. God, I wish I could do that. Just snap your fingers and suddenly everything's back to the way it was before you started doing stuff. That would be so handy. Universal undo button. Someone make that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Also, just to be easily task driven and snapping fingers is a lot easier than wriggling my nose and a lot easier than getting Mary Poppins to be my nanny because those are the only other ways I know how to do it. Also, crossing your hands and nodding your head. Yeah, but I have to show my belly button for that. Ah, going back to the store, I like the... So, we're gonna get the self-folding flying glowing napkins? <laughs> yeah, because that was actually kind of the coolest thing that Discord made in the decoration store, but Ponyville's not that big of a town. Does no one know that Discord and Fluttershy are friends? And Fluttershy only seems to be hosting Discord for tea parties? So, wouldn't it come up in conversation with the shop ponies that... Who she was... Hosting? Yeah. You, you would think it would between small town, polite conversation. Yeah, I think it would come up in small talk. She goes, oh, I'm hosting my friend. He's kind of nice. He's a little crazy, though. I don't think she would say he's a Dracronocrist or the Lord of all chaos. No, she'd just go, oh, yes, my friend Discord is coming over. And they would all assume that was a pony name. Mm-hmm. And wonder what his parents were thinking. Yes. Though, no, fun pun, ginseng that actually sings. I was all for shipping them off because I found the song a little annoying. I also like at the actual party when Fluttershy was going, Oh, is it green tea that actually turns to screen? Or is it jealous of the other teas? I was like, oh, that's a good one. I didn't catch that before. Yeah, that was nice. And I have a chair. Where is it? Because you know, she was ready for things to be... Out there. Yes. Going back to the cleanup, how they got rid of the piñata. It took me way too long to get that pun. Yeah, I, I find the piñata disturbing on so many levels. Because first, it's a pony run shop. A piñata is a donkey, which is kind of like a pony. There are donkeys that live in Ponyville. So wouldn't that be like a human going into a party shop? And getting a piñata of a person. They have those. I know they do, but I find them extremely disturbing. Not that a regular piñata is any better. Let me just beat this facsimile of an animal senseless to get candy. Mm. So it wasn't so much just the existence of the piñata, because I know they do make humanoid ones. It was that he basically brought it to life and it sneezed candy. That's a joke I... Still can't quite get. It's. A, I'm pretty sure it's a pun or a reference to something. I'm thinking it's Viva Pinata. Probably that game. Either the game or the series. Uh, Television series. And back to the pun. Pinatas don't like bats. Ah! It's basically how it worked. <laughs> pretty much. Because I was just sitting there going, wait, wait a minute. I had to actually say it out loud because when we were watching it, Amber couldn't quite hear it. So I went, oh yeah. He said, Pinatas don't like bats. Dot, dot, 
dot. Pinatas don't like bats. <laughs> and she was like, yeah. Why didn't I get that? <laughs> I have no idea. No, and all the instances of Discord talking to himself, both at Fluttershy's, in the park with the lady pony sitting between them, and again back at his house with the work crew. Mm-hmm. At one point, I suddenly wanted to say, I'm the brainy one, and I'm the cool one. <laughs> yeah, kind of like several times. <laughs> like, they're all the same, but they do the whole, I'm this personality. No, I'm pers this personality, but you're exactly the same. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And the whole work crew and the cleanup is like, he could have just done that with one snap of his claws, but no, that would have been too normal. That brings up the whole problem I actually have with the episode. If he could be destroyed by being normal, that's a really big weakness, actually. I'm like, thinking like, but, well, wait, uh, I guess the easiest way to kill chaos is by being its friend. Then it becomes normal. Then it's no longer chaos. Wow. It's not really a problem, but it's like, why didn't the Elements of Harmony do that? Well, maybe that's why the Elements of Harmony turned Discord into a statue. Because by taking away the chaos, it would have destroyed him. So instead of purifying, it imprisoned. Hmm. Or the Elements of Harmony may have imprisoned him until a point where he could have been befriended except the whole reason that he escaped in season two was because the cmc were fighting yeah but that eventually led to him being turned to stone again which then had him unstoned and then befriended by fluttershy yes in the swiftest redemption arc ever yeah e except possibly for sunset shimmer not really she had an entire movie that only happened because they didn't finish the first movie. <laughs> she basically lost and apologized. Quickest redemption ever. But the rest of the school did hate her still. It took an entire movie for them to forgive her. The only reason the main six human forms forgave her because Twilight went, give her a chance. And then they gave her a chance and they got to know the new version of her. So she wasn't really redeemed. She was just made less mean so she could be redeemed. Fine, but basing it on the single movie that was all that was in existence when the movie was made. Also, I don't know why we're talking about this. It doesn't even exist. <laughs> we have proof that it exists. It's called a recording. Falsified. <laughs> but back to the episode. Yes. And probably wrapping it up a little bit. <laughs> oh, but the, the makeover scene. <laughs> yeah, there were many references in there that... I know our references, but I don't know them personally, so I can't really go, oh, this is from this, and this is from this. I'm pretty sure one was to Henry VIII. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I don't know where the others are from, other than maybe generic ones of, like, the teenager with the pants. Yeah, there's that, and then the very first one, I was actually really liking that with the green coat, but since I've relatively recently read Green Rider, that's where my head went, and I'm like, there's no way they're referencing that. Mm. And I love how Fluttershy kept getting more and more into the chaos. If you listen to her tone of voice as she was trying to do it, like, ooh, I knocked this cup over. Isn't it chaotic? And, oh, I ate a bite of every sandwich and I'm talking with my mouth full. She sounds so much like she does when she tries to do the scary tea party for her friends with the cutouts and the spooky voice. Mm. Uh, and I love how that really shows how much she's grown because she can do that she, she wouldn't even think of how to be chaotic before and now she's like oh how do I help save my friend and be chaotic oh I know I'll talk to myself in reflective objects and I'll make stairs that go to nowhere well technically they go up that's technically a place yeah they just don't lead to another room mm-hmm I'm like, I failed to see the problem. <laughs> Stairs are good cardio. Yeah, they're also a good place to sit. Yes, but I'd like to know who held the furniture for Fluttershy while she hammered it to the ceiling. Also, I love the touch of her using safety goggles. Very nice touch. Safety first, kids. Mm-hmm. Like, kids actually watch our programs. Or listen to them, for that matter. Oh, uh, I'm just pointing out 
that, oh, it's a kid show. We're showing safe behavior. Mm -hmm. I was making a joke there about like, yeah, like kids actually, kids, if you're listening to this, please continue, but make sure your parents also know they can like watch other episodes and decide whether or not you can continue to watch. Please continue. <laughs> parents, let them continue to listen to us. We're wonderful people. I mean, look at the pretty drawings. I can beg for views. You can. You can. Not like we haven't before and probably will again. So, any more? Oh, well, it was just very fun, and it's nice to see that the Lord of Chaos can have insecurities. First, the shop ponies were making him feel like he wasn't worthy of being Fluttershy's friend, and then combining that with Pinkie Pie's reasonable advice, he came to the conclusion that, hmm, Fluttershy and I are too different. I have to change who I am for us to be friends. <coughs> grease. Cough. Grease. <laughs> Still haven't seen that. And the internet explodes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've only ever seen parts of it. I may have actually seen an entire musical number from it. Maybe not. I don't know. I basically remember parts of Grease Lightning. I think it was called Grease Lightning. Yes, it was called Grease Lightning. Is that the same song where they go back and forth between one point of view and the other? No, that's Summer Lovin'. Okay, I've seen part of that one too. Yeah. Well, I can't summarize, but I'm sure there's at least some people out there who've seen Grease, so you know what I'm talking about, the whole... Well, actually, that's all I'm going to say. Mm-hmm. Also, spoilers if you haven't seen Grease. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's one thing to want to improve yourself and to make changes because of a friendship with someone else and you want to be better, it doesn't mean you have to be different. It doesn't mean forsaking who you are. And so I think the lesson was be who you are because that's why your friends like you. And if you don't have any friends, then maybe that's why. <laughs> I love how gently you put that. <laughs> but I think it's time for our overall thoughts in the episode. What do you think? I really enjoyed it. Fun Discord episode. It's nice to see Fluttershy in Discord and a prolific use of Discord magic without actually hurting anyone. I mean, he was a nice guy. He caught the pony who was falling and put the teapot back on the shelf. You know, he's expanded from only caring about Fluttershy to caring about at least not harming others. Mm -hmm. May still prank the heck out of him, but... Yeah, or just do stuff and not really clean up after himself. But he kind of semi-does. Like, he takes his stuff, but he doesn't actually take it. He pays for it just they just question the legitimacy of the payment method <laughs> but yeah it's a really nice discord episode it's very mild it's good use of his powers he's just fun to be around in that episode and now we move on to the next episode the perfect pair this is a really nice episode even though the entire episode is basically the Biggest retcon they've done yet. Yes. Bigger than retconning another alicorn. And an older brother for Twilight. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. It's another one of those well-done retcons that you're like, it's so good, I don't care. Yes, and we just dance around the question. We don't actually come out and say... How the parents are. It's heavily implied in this episode... And in other episodes that, yeah, they're definitely dead. Yeah, but I know there's some weird censoring for children's shows. I know you can't say the word dead or death. Or threaten to kill anyone or say the word kill or harm. Weird things. Like, you can say destroy. I'm going to destroy someone, but you can't say I'm going to kill them. It's the same bloody thing. Yes, this is why the villains always say they're going to destroy the heroes. But we know that you can have a graveyard in a children's show. So they could have shown gravestones. Yeah, and maybe gave a sense of how the parents are gone. Because it's really fuzzy on this episode. What's also really fuzzy is how well Big Mac and Applejack knew their parents. Because if you look at the age differences, at the very least, Buttercup still had to be 
alive when Apple Bloom was born. Bright Mac could be gone after she became pregnant, but Buttercup has to at least be alive long enough to give birth to Apple Bloom. Yeah, and that means that Big Mac and Applejack should have known their parents quite well. Because if you look at the flashback episode... With the whole um, Applejack lying about Granny being sick, Applejack was very much a teenager in that episode. Big Mac was older, and Apple Bloom was nowhere to be seen, and neither were the parents. Yeah, it's just weird. That's the only real problem I have with this episode. Other than that, it was a really nicely done, sweet, cute love story. A little bit of... Romeo and Juliet throw it in there, star-crossed lover. Yeah, feuding families, we meet anyways, we fall in love. It's a little rushed version of that, but I think it's done pretty well for the time limit they had. Especially with the whole redemption thing at the end between Granny Smith and Grand Pair. That kind of went kind of quickly, but I get why time limits and they wanted the whole thing at the end with the tree, or two trees, realistically. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's so cute. Especially the beginning of the two's relationship. They say, if you hold this up, your face glows. It doesn't work on me. Does it work on me? Yes. Yes, it does. It probably didn't work on Bright Mac because he's already yellow. Mm hmm Also, I love how almost all the emotional and personal traits are from the mother, but the physical traits are from the father. If you pay attention to the flashbacks, all the physical traits are from the dad, but all the talent traits are from the mother. The singing... Big Mac got. Mm -hmm. The helping people with their cutie marks, Apple Bloom got. The honesty, Applejack oh. got. Yeah, but the honesty was Bright Mac. Oh, well, because, you're right. Yeah, because he's the one who knocked over the tower and he came out of hiding to clear Buttercup's name. Thank you. I missed that. I, I contributed them all to the mother. It's kind of interesting that they actually didn't point that out because they pointed out both the honesty and the cutie mark thing. In the episodes, but they didn't point out that Big Mac obviously inherited his mother's seeing talent. Yeah, currently they didn't want to bring that back up because we really only had one episode where he was professionally seeing because the pony tones, and then we had it again when he was courting Sugar Bell. So it hasn't come up as much as the other two traits. Oh, so what are the highlights for you? Uh, it was just really cute and i kind of liked how they had to travel around to get different pieces of the story it almost felt a little bit like a western to me or the western style how they write certain tv shows there were westerns and they were doing old stories especially the oh you've come to hurry about your grandpappy kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah and everyone kind of going yeah we thought you might ask and we weren't sure how to tell you which is very much a thing, because it's hard to know the right time to tell someone difficult, or how to say it, or how to open the conversation. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just do hope we hear more about the parents. It doesn't even have to be that exact, what exactly happened to them, but in a better way confirming, like, when they disappeared, when they suffered whatever happened, so we can get a better idea of, like, so was it just after Apple Bloom? Because so far we're implying that it's pretty soon after Apple Bloom because she has no clear memory of them. Yeah. And so it's like, so how do Big Mac and Applejack know so little? Because we've never seen the parents prior to this. Also, nice little background detail that the Mare in the Moon silhouette was still on the moon. Mm -hmm. In the flashbacks. Mm -hmm. It was just a well done episode. There was... A bunch of nice little things, how the parents knew a lot of people in town, which makes sense. The people they knew, like the connection to Mrs. Cake and how we found out what her original name was. So apparently you can, when you get married to someone, inherit their name. Apparently so. So she went from being Chiffon Swirl to Mrs. Cake. Or something cake. We don't know what her... Chiffon Cake, maybe? Which still works, but... They've always called her Miss Cake in the series. Also interesting that Mare Mare pronounced Buttercup and Bright Mac husband and wife, where in the season two Canterlot wedding, it was Mare and Colt, which got a lot of flack because Mare's an adult and Colt is a child. Should have mm. been Mare and Stallion. 
So interesting that they used husband and wife there. I think it was a quicker way to get across the concept. Mm -hmm. Also difference in timing, that wedding was much older in the timeline and also in a different city. Ponyville as opposed to Canterlot. And a royal couple versus a normal couple. Yes, and I don't remember the phrasing for the wedding for Cranky and Matilda. Yeah, I don't remember it either. Yeah, I'm thinking it might have been Jack and Jenny. Hmm. Because those are the donkey names. Hmm. Uh, and bringing up the episode again makes me remember the one of my favorite parts. I thought you were the one that was supposed to bring the present. I thought you were the one. <laughs> it's like, you're alicorns. Teleport something. Mm-hmm. Or just wink yourself back to the palace, grab it, and come back. Mm -hmm. Is there any more points you think we should go over? Okay, you guys were competitive for a market, but this whole thing was stupid. You were business competitors. Why did you go and make it personal? Also, there were a whole lot more apples and pears working on the farm back in the day. Because what, there's a total of three full-bodied workers now? When they were like two, when Apple Bloom wasn't really helping much? So what happened to all the other apples? I can understand the pear is being gone now because, you know, they kind of packed up the family and left, but where is everyone else? Because they only seem to arrive for the reunions. Yeah, so doesn't make sense there. Or, you know, did the family drift apart over time? Because in the last reunion episode, they went out into orchards that weren't really being used. Mm. You know, where the fruit bats were. And also, how does that timing work at all? Because we know that the Apple family was kind of the founders of Ponyville, practically, because they set up there and Celestia let them, and that's when they got the zap apple trees because they planted stuff and they were waiting for it to grow and they had no food. So the apples were there first. Why would the pears plant directly next to the apples? And also, why do the trees look like they're about the same age? Mm-hmm. A lot of questions. Certain parts kind of fall apart like we said it's, it's it's a good retcon that doesn't mean it's a well written retcon it's just a retcon that we really like the outcome of like twilight having a really awesome brother and a really awesome babysitter mm -hmm. we're really okay with retcons as long as we get good things out of them like a sweet love story between the parents yes and just you see it you know right after the ceremony granny smith is almost instantly okay with pear butter because i think it's because of the way the father was like no you're making me choose then i choose them and oh granny smith is a very nice person she would have saw that and gone dude you're being a jerk and would have gone right over to her and comforted her yeah because she's being forced to choose you know who her family is and she didn't forsake the pear she said but Daddy, the apples are my family now, too. Can't I have both? And he says no. And I mean, she's crying right there. Granny Smith's not that hard-hearted. And Grandpa was just so angry and stubborn that he decided he was going to be that hard-hearted. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I liked Granny Smith a little bit more right there. <laughs> yeah, because it was basically the two of them fighting that started the whole thing. I'm like, there's absolutely no reason for this. You guys could have worked together and come up with some awesome apple pear jam and apple pear desserts. And this coming together could have been a joining of the two families into a huge farming conglomerate. But no, you're going to run off to Van Hoover. Yeah. Hmm. Well, hopefully we hear more about this in the future. Mm hmm Also, I'd like to point out that the two trees growing together really impossible. It's pretty and everything, but impossible. No, though it would take a lot of sculpting for it to grow like that. I wonder if the parents kept coming out there every once in a while. That's another thing. How did no one find that tree? Ever, because it's very clearly stated that it's at the edge of Sweet Apple Acres. And we see them plant the two seeds. Mm-hmm. So how did, like, no one ever run into it by accident? ever in their entire lives mm -hmm. and if the three kids knew about it why would they have never shown granny smith i i think they found out about it through the story found it first and then went to confront the grandparents could be but still 
Yeah, I think it's mostly the fact that, like, no one else on the farm ever ran into that tree. Yeah. Ever. Come on. Seriously? So, summary thoughts? Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we finally got some information about the parents, which is one of the things we've been wanting. Retcon, but it's not as badly shoehorned as it could have been. Yeah, I found it a very enjoyable episode. It's definitely a serious retcon. I think it's actually done pretty well as a retcon. We got enjoyable stuff out of it. It does bring into question a lot of stuff about the timeline, but still, it's enjoyable. And they're just very nice people in the episode, and I like the setup and the story and how it's told. It's a little quick, but, you know, you have to fit it within a 22-minute episode. Yeah, I don't think they really could have justified making that backstory a two-parter. Mm-hmm. So, I enjoyed it, and I thought it was pretty well done. So, outro? Outro. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on My Little Pony. Friendship is Magic, Season 7. Episodes 12 and 13. Discordant Harmony and The Perfect Pair. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, well, if you're here at the outro, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, check out other videos. We have a lot of MLP, but we also do other pop culture topics. We have anime, Disney, a few movies, a couple concerts. Go check it out. New episodes every Saturday. Also, on Wednesdays, we have a different format. Ember's Reading Room. Adult Perspective on Children's Books. Currently just picture books, but we'll see what happens. Uh, we have a main playlist of all the episodes, and also playlists breaking the books down by series and franchise. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on Tumblr, DeviantArt, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, and I'm sure some others eventually. There's so many social media sites out there. I really like his art and would maybe like some of your own? Check out his commission link for pricing and availability. Enjoy this channel and want to support it but not interested in a commission? We do have Patreon and Ko-fi for your financial consideration. Patreon starts at $1 and Ko-fi works in increments of 3.